Good morning, everybody. So every time we add new technology, things get more exciting. First thing I'm going to do is take my sweater off because I'm hot. So bear with me. Centering music. That's Gail's taking a layer off music. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Whether you are familiar with us or you are visiting us, it is the first Sunday of Advent everywhere in the world, including here in Jackson. It's also the weekend that we're coming off of Thanksgiving, so it's a multi layered time of year when we have a lot of both wonderful and sorrowful things that come together as we celebrate holidays and gather with family, with friends, when we think about those who cannot be with us, when we are troubled by events in the world. But we come here to recenter ourselves, to gather as community and to remember what the season truly means so that when we leave here again, we're ready to pay attention to what is most important in our lives, in our community. That being said, any announcements that we want to share for the life of the church, I would welcome at this time. Um, prayer concerns will come later. Anybody in Zoom or here in the sanctuary have an announcement that you need to make? Linda has one. We need the microphone. Cheryl has it. And just make sure it's turned on when you share it. For anybody that doesn't know, this is a hybrid service. So, um, and this is the first time we've ever, maybe the second oh. time we've done this. We actually have a television in the sanctuary. So that today when we share the choir video, those who are in the sanctuary will be able to see it if you so choose. And you can also see the people who are gathered in Zoom. Um, go ahead, Linda. Um, I have actually three announcements. Okay. <laughs> One, we're collecting calendars at the Gibson Center. There's a box out front. There's still about six tags on the tree for Angels and Elves. You have a week. If you could pick up a tag and buy something this week, it's due next Sunday. We'd appreciate that. And I want to thank everybody for the food they've been bringing for the food box. That's helpful. We donate to both the Gibson, sorry, the Gibson Center the Way Station, and the Jackson Bartlett Food Pantry. And the last one is that the women's group is having a potluck lunch here at 11.30 on Friday. And if you'd like to come and you haven't signed up yet, if you catch me or kick Griffin after church, we'll be happy to sign you up. Thank you, Linda. Other announcements for the life of the church? Wendy's got one, so we're going to give Wendy the microphone. Just remember to speak into it. Good morning. Uh, this Wednesday at 1030, we're going, to, oh, wait a minute, have I got the right date? Yes, you do. do December I? 1st. Yeah, okay. Yep. That we're meeting 1030 Wednesday to start to uh, decorate the sanctuary. We're not going to be doing the whole thing, but um, we're going to be gathering all the decorations, and we're going to decorate part of the church until the following week. Also, this Tuesday afternoon, I think it's going to be the afternoon, uh, we have arranged to have five Christmas trees delivered, which are going to be implanted out on the right-hand side of the church, very similar to what we did last year. That was sort of in honor or because of covid and uh, we wanted the church to look pretty, inviting, and uh, giving the message of hope. And so we are doing it again. And I think Gail's um, theme is light. Mm -hmm. So we hope to light up those church <laughs> trees outside. Thank you, Wendy. That's Tuesday afternoon. I believe that's going to take place. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you things that we're keeping from COVID. Any other announcements for the life of the church? Yes, Gail. I'd like to remind folks of the Dine to Donate fundraiser 
for the mm -hmm. way station mm -hmm. is tomorrow evening at flatbread pizza and we're also um auction raffling you have to go online and bid for a beautiful uh, hand and machine made queen size quilt that sue davidson made and the proceeds of course will go towards the way station thank you jeanette um a couple of other things advent resources are some are already out in front of the church if anybody needs a set of candles we have about 12 sets in the front that you can take we have two remaining logs that were uh, we, we created some in past years we have two left so if there's any family or household that doesn't have one already there are two that can be claimed after that you'll have to just use candle holders but uh, take a set of candles if you would like also uh, we will be sending out digitally the devotional later today we'll be printing a couple of copies that will be available but it's a little work to get that ready so that'll be available later today and the advent library will also be up this afternoon and then finally i have a couple copies already out front but po jen is visiting in bartlett through christmas or actually through new year's and we're collaborating on an Advent book study together. So Wednesdays, I think it's four o'clock or five o'clock. I sent it out in the calendar, but just look for that. The books, more of them have come in. I'll be picking them up at the post office tomorrow. There are a couple copies here. If anybody wants to participate, the theme is Scrooge. We're going to be looking at Scrooge. And then hopefully for anybody that wants to go, we will go see the play by M&D. We've suggested a couple nights, so any or all of that that you're interested in doing together, it's available to you. So lots and lots of wonderful programming coming up next weekend. Just remember, let's see, first of all, John Pepper's service is being moved to 11 a.m., so please make a note of that. I will send out a reminder to the congregation, but they're moving it forward by one hour. That's on Saturday, December 4th. It will be a crowded service. We will have to have overflow into the parish hall and you will need to wear masks if you come. But if you are concerned about crowds, you should think hard about coming. Uh, we will also be live streaming it for anybody that wishes to observe it but can't be in this space with a lot of people. Additionally, the Delavalas are playing bluegrass music for us. They're offering us a peace concert at four o'clock next Sunday. So anybody that wants to come and hear some, probably like some resistance music, some folk music, it should be a treat. Those are the announcements I have for the life of the church. I hope that's enough. Then Alan, maybe you could give us real gathering music and we will actually invite everybody to now move from announcements and business into a time of worship together. And I just want to say again that we are grateful for Alan's presence. He serves two churches, and that can be challenging from time to time, especially when there are emergencies in one church or another with other musicians. Um, and Alan is here um, supporting us, and we appreciate it. He had to choose today, and he chose to be with us because he's 
part of our team too. We invite the White family forward to help us enter into the season by leading us in the candle lighting for the first Sunday of Advent. Good luck. Uh, we need a, um, yeah, can you grab, actually, why don't we just use the portable microphone if you could, Cheryl? So you guys, it, but just speak right into it so the people in the um, Zoom can hear you. Hello? Good morning. All righty. Sorry, right into it. In the first winter season, when days are short and nights are long, we live, study, play, and work in a time of global tension and uncertainty. Light is promised to us. In today's reading, an angel comes to a young woman and tells her that she will bear a new life and new light into the world. She is unprepared, unprepared for how her life will change. The angel responds with the story of her cousin Elizabeth, who was expecting a baby, even though that seemed unlikely. Elizabeth has embodied hope. She reflects on all she has learned, and then she answers the angel. She says yes to becoming a light bearer. And for our thank you to the White family for bringing us into the Advent season. And they, and they got the uh, light on the first strike of the match. I usually take three to get that. So they're talented with these matches. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering if we could show a gallery view to the folks in Zoom so that they can see. It's a little far away, but the, the candle. It's up here next to me on the dais. We're trying to share as much of our in-person experience with people on Zoom in as inclusive a way as possible. And we got good feedback on having the wide view of the church. They like to see everybody and everything. So thumbs up in Zoom if this is still working for you. I don't see any thumbs. Are they frozen? Did we lose them? Shoot, we lost them. Can you guys hear no, us, Chris? We're, yeah, we can hear you. You're frozen to us, but okay. we're here and, and the thumbs are up. Oh, good. That's great. I'm probably getting kicked off Zoom right now. This is the way this goes. This is really exciting all the time. There it went. See, told you. I have to join it again. So you guys get to see this whole process that I go through all the time. If this keeps happening, we're going to give up on the. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to continue with the service regardless of the, the Zoom thing. So we'll deal with that. We turn now to prayer. And so I invite at this time prayers for the life of the church. And we begin with prayers of concern. I'm going to start in the sanctuary because I can see all of you. And then Sandy will direct me for anybody that has prayers in Zoom that they want to share. So if you have a prayer of concern that you want to share out loud, please raise your hand so that Cheryl can bring the microphone to you. And I do have two requests um, from the eight o'clock for prayers for Frank and prayers for Ben, both of whom are living with cancer. And these are both young fathers living with cancer. Go ahead, Meg, please. Um, I want to ask for people to pray for those um, going through transitions in their life Although Thanksgiving is a wonderful time of families gathering, sometimes families are gathering at less than, under less than good conditions and uh, facing transitions. My dad's not doing very well, and lots of family who haven't seen him in a while got to come and visit a lot, but they know they may be saying goodbye, so it's very difficult. Thank you. And then we have, um, go ahead, Irene, and then Claire. I would like to say a prayer for my husband. 
for surgery on the Tuesday. Hope all goes well. This is heart surgery, historically. Well, my daughter-in-law and her friend, childhood friend, whose um, grandson just unexpectedly passed away, three years old at daycare, um, cause unknown. For a three-year-old who died in the family of a three-year-old, is that what I heard, Claire? I would like to ask for prayers for my sister. She is not well, has not been well for many times. She lives with two mentally challenged boys, in a, they're not boys anymore, and they're in their 60s. And the youngest one now has cancer. And please pray for her. She's, she needs it. Thank you, Jean. Other prayers of concern here in the sanctuary? All right, Sandy, can you hear me still? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, do you guys have a view from the phone in the church that shows the whole church? Yes, we do. Okay, we may have to just go with that. Um, technology here is not helping us right now. So are there prayers of concern in the Zoom? Sandy? I think we're good. I was looking. I think we're good. Okay. Let us begin then with a moment of holding the prayers that have been lifted up out loud that are of concern. And then we will move to prayers of celebration and hope. We pray for Frank, for Ben, for John, for a child whose name we do not know right now. We pray for Jean, sister. We pray for Scamp, for Huntley, for Mary, the grandchild of Sasha, and for Sasha, for Richard, we have two Richards we pray for. For Alice, mourning John. For Anne, mourning Joanne. For Arden and Ray. For Jan and Barry. For Sandra and Richard. For those who are cared for, for people on the front lines living with COVID, with cancer, with other forms of life limiting or debilitating diagnoses of all kinds for those living with mental health challenges, especially in times like these, for those who try to remain sober, especially during the holidays, day by day, we pray. For this world full of its uncertainties and its challenges, when we stand on the precipice of hope and then we tremble and we hear difficult news, and yet we continue to live with hope in spite of these things, we pray. We invite now your prayers of celebration. And in this case, I invite first the people in Zoom to share. And then we'll go from Zoom back to the sanctuary. So Sandy, do you see anybody in? Yes. It's Ginger. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we're here with baby Jack and the family and everything is going wonderful. Cassandra's doing great. And baby Jack is just adorable. And I'm in love with my little prince. Mm. We'll do a picture later. <laughs> and Jennifer. Go ahead, Jennifer want to say that my husband and I had a wonderful time on our vacation slash anniversary birthday celebration and um, it was just bliss not having um, very much cell service so it was like really really quiet but it was kind of hard because we wanted to be able to see where we were going or where to find things and so you know it was kind of aggravating in that aspect but 
we made it through and it was just wonderful. Awesome. We're trying Zoom again here, so we'll see what we get. Deanna, go ahead. I got a new car and I went ski snow skiing yesterday with my new skis. Deanna's like always the first one on the powder, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing keeps this woman down. <laughs> Arden, go ahead. My daughter, Laura, said that she was going to stay one day uh, and night and um, be here with Ray. And I just heard from, from a very dear friend who lives down in Raymond, New Hampshire, that um, I should come down and spend overnight with her and we'll oh. get to catch up on a whole lot of stuff. So. Thank you to Laura and always. So Arden's getting a girl's night away from a very challenging time. She loves her husband and she's vigiling with him through a lot of challenges. Um, and part of building hope is a chance to have renewal for yourself, a little bit of respite, so you can be present with those that you love on the journeys that they too are taking. Other celebrations or gratitudes in Zoom? Sandy? I think that's it. Okay. Um, then here in the sanctuary, please again, raise your hand and Cheryl will come around to you. So Bob and Kit have something happy to share? No, you do because the people in Zoom can't hear you. We're a hyper-connected place now. Okay, I just wanted to uh, say how great it is to see Joyce and Richard in church today. It's wonderful to see them both here. Joyce and, and Richard uh, have been residents of the Valley, although they live full-time on the Cape, and they've had a lot of health challenges. So to, to have you both here, uh, walking in together, is makes our hearts warm to have you with us. Go for it, Evie. Um, this Wednesday in the afternoon around three o'clock, um, me and my class, we were outside getting ready for a dismissal and we saw a moose walking in the woods. You saw a moose over in, was this Bartlett or Conway? Um, Conway? Conway, North Conway, John Fuller. Wow, a moose by John Fuller. Wow. All right. I like it. Somebody get me a moose. You know, you guys advertise meese and moose, and here I am, and I haven't seen a whole lot of them in my five years here. Um, other. Okay, come on. This was Thanksgiving. There's like, you know, thanks and gratitude going on. Is there anybody that's happy or has somebody thankful that they want to say in the sanctuary? Don't make me call on you in person. Oh, Bob's got something. Don't worry, I will. I'll call you by name if I have to. I just wanted to say that I have many, many things to be grateful for this season. And one of them is uh, my friend that you have all, many of you met, Elizabeth, I call her Bunny. <laughs> for loving relationships, Kala has something to be happy about. Cheryl, up here. grandparents could drive up from Pennsylvania to celebrate Thanksgiving with us. It's nice. So for family reunions, for relationships, for love that we meet along the way, for loves that have lasted a lifetime and the milestones, the anniversaries and birthdays that we are celebrating. My niece celebrated her birthday on Thanksgiving. I know there are a few other people around that probably have Thanksgiving birthdays. Baby Jack is close. Um, for joy, for perspective, to appreciate the blessings that we do have, and that day by day, we are gifted with so much in our lives. Please pray with me. This is the season of preparation, O oh God. When we prepare ourselves, our lives, our hearts, our minds to welcome love, to be active and present in our world again and in our own spiritual being again. 
today we focus on hope. And you have heard prayers where we lift up the names of those who may themselves not have so much hope. And we lift up hope on their behalves, hope for dignity, for comfort, for healing, for justice, for what can be and what ought to be. We lift up too with gratitude those things that have given us joy, that have reconnected us to ourselves, to our world, to each other, the things that stand against fear in our time and help us plant our feet firmly on the ground and be present to this world in which we walk, serve, love, play, and live. We offer you now our silence. And before we begin the Lord's Prayer, we name also our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe, which is one of the places where the new variant is certainly present. We pray for people around the world who struggle with the things that remind us how we are all connected. We lift up our voices now, O oh God, saying those words that you first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are going to sing four verses of People Look East. So please find that hymn in your hymnal. It's the red hymnal, and it's page 116. And if you would rise, if you are able to do so, to sing with us. going to invite forward Linda and are is anybody reading with you or are you going to do the whole thing okay so Linda and Sue so could we borrow again the microphone for Linda and Sue they will use it to read I think that would be a little easier and you can read from wherever you want they're going to put up the words of the scripture so a reading from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 through 4 six through seven. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder, for the yoke of their burden, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Uh, from Quran 3, 42 to 43. Mention when the angel said, O Mary, indeed Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of the worlds. O Mary, be devoutly obedient to your Lord and prostrate and bow with those who bow in prayer. And the same in 1916 to 22. And mention, O Muhammad, in the book, the story of Mary when she withdrew from her family to a place toward the east, and she took in seclusion from them a screen. Then we sent to her our angel, and he represented himself to her as an immaculate human. She said, indeed, I seek refuge in the most merciful from you. So leave me, if you should be fearing of Allah. He said, I am only the messenger of your Lord to give you the news of pure joy. She said, how can I have a boy while no man has touched me, and I have not been unchaste? He said, thus it will be, your Lord says, it is easy for me, and we will make him a sign for humanity and a mercy from us, and it is a matter already decided. So she conceived him, and she withdrew with him to a remote place. And then from Luke 1, 26 to 38, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thank you to both of you. So we just heard a reading from Isaiah. We read two selections from the Quran, as well as a passage from Luke. I ask that you will now pray with me. O oh, holy God, may the words of our hearts and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
today is the day of hope. And I'm sure you have heard the version of the saying that goes, hope is not a plan. How many have heard that before? Which gives no credit to the idea of those who hope. It, it says that hope is something for Pollyannas. Who knows what a Pollyanna is? <laughs> Hopefully most, most of the older generations know Pollyannas, optimists, idealists, who are very full of rose-colored view of the world, as if to view the world that way discredits the possibility that you could make a plan. And there might even be some truth to that. Research will tell you that people that are pessimists and skeptics actually are, are people who find resilience more easily in times of trouble than people who are absolute idealists and optimists. Because skeptics do what you need to do to ground yourself in hope more quickly. They ask, what's plan B? What's the backup plan? What's the worst that could happen when I'm presented with a scenario? They immediately start gathering information. They want to know what's all around them. And then from there, by naming the reality in which you find yourself when you are in a stressful, uh, a trying time, you can begin to figure out what is possible for you to be able to do to make change, to manage the situation if you cannot change it, to find some agency and some empowerment in events or experiences over which you feel that you have initially no control. It feels right now as if we live in Pandora's box. Somebody opened the lid and lots of things flew out and they have made this world very challenging for us. And anybody who needs to look up Pandora and follow that story, there was something at the bottom of Pandora's box. Once people were overwhelmed by all the trials and tribulations that came out, the diseases, the monsters, the mental health, the pandemics, the economic crises and stock market crashes, whatever it was that came out of that box, the social upheaval, the political strife, the military coups and revolutions and refugees, all the things that we feel must be tipping our world into a place where things seem untenable and overwhelming and can we get through this? There was something at the bottom of Pandora's box. And it was that thing for which we lit a candle this morning. It was hope. Hope. There is an ancient wisdom that says hope is essential to our survival to our very being, to how we wake up and get through a single day of being human in this world, in any time, in any condition. And yes, initially hope might not sound like a plan, but truthfully, hope is what helps you make a plan. Hope is not something without muscle and fiber. It is not an abstraction. It is what people reach for in the darkest, most challenging of times. It is found because people have the capacity to have perspective, to ground themselves in where they are and look face into the darkness, the challenge, the wilderness, the uncertainty that comes when we need hope. We don't reach for hope because something isn't bothering us. We reach for hope because something is at risk. We stand on a threshold, perhaps personally, because we have just heard news that changes our lives forever in ways that are frightening, that raise up questions we weren't prepared to ask, or perhaps it's a threshold that we face as a community or as a nation, such as when they tell us we're in a pandemic. 
throughout our lives, we constantly pass over thresholds. We pass the threshold of birth itself to come into this world. And that is what we prepare for this whole season, thresholds that we will cross together and individually. When we face these thresholds, we end up needing to look into the fertile darkness, into that place where the questions live, where beginnings are rooted and taking seed, where everything that we don't know, that we may even fear, seems to exist. And we begin by looking at it, taking a breath, and asking of it, how do I make sense of this? What can I do with what is handed to me to make meaning, to learn a lesson, to survive, to bear witness? It's hard to ask the questions of uncertainty and fear, but hope is what plants us. And when we look into the places of our not knowing, and we ask questions and we take stock of what is happening around us, this is where hope begins to become real. Because when we look with faith, when we look with some amount of trust, when we look with trepidation, but some kind of courage that we find deep within us, at what surrounds us, then we can begin to understand what is possible for me here and now. What can I do? Even if it is only to walk with the one I love towards an ending that we did not choose. But we will do this together. Even if it is to find a new way to become community for each other, when all of the things that we reached for have been cut off and we have to start all over and reinvent what it means to be friends and family and community in a changing world. Hope is gathered and planned and mapped out step by step because we have the courage to look into darkness, to ask questions, and to believe that beneath all the things that are layered inside Pandora's box, there is something more. And we are reaching for more. We are reaching for each other because love as we know it is experienced through the people that you see around you in this room today, the people that you see on Zoom, the people that you choose to be in connection with, to form community with. Hope is real. And if you didn't have hope, you wouldn't get out of bed. If you're in a 12-step program, maybe your hope is measured one hour at a time, one phone call to a sponsor at a time, one meeting at a time, one day at a time, one milestone at a time. We have all stood on some type of precipice or threshold in our lives. And hope helped us walk across the threshold and to take the first step and then the next step and the next step. And we have hope because we have perspective enough to be grateful for what is possible we have some kind of resilience because we are connected to each other. And even when we feel cut off, we look around and suddenly can find that there's more going on to support us than we knew. And we are less alone than we thought. Today, we light one candle. By the end of Advent, we will light four, and then on Christmas Eve, we will light the Christ candle. And then we will hold up all of our lights together, and our lights moving in the darkness, our lights burning in our hearts, 
our lights burning in our minds and our lives change the world when we leave this place. We pass light to each other. And wick by wick and candle by candle, word by word and deed by deed and love by love, we pass a flame and it is fed by hope and it builds resilience and it stands against fear so that we know, yes, we can find a way beyond this threshold and we can walk and we can live and we can find a way to love each other because underneath everything else was hope. And that hope is in us. That hope is in each of you. It is in those that you see on Zoom. It is in those that you will meet in the world. You are the bearers of light. You are the bearers of hope. Thanks be to God. I invite you now, um, if you want to watch with your eyes, the video is going to be here. And if you just want to listen with your ears, we're going to hear the debut of O Magnum Mysterium by the choir. Billy is here. Do you want to say anything, Billy? Yeah, sure. I have a bit of an introduction for this. Um, good morning, everyone. This morning, the JCC Choir will debut its 2021 Christmas season with Evan Ramos' arrangement of Omagna Mysterium. Aligning with the first theme of Advent, Hope, this song describes the scene of the baby Jesus lying in a manger uh, with the farm animals watching him. In choral literature history, Omagna Mysterium's text is a popular choice for compositions, especially for the Christmas season. Next to Ubi Caritas and selections from Handel's Messiah, the text alone to O Magnum Mysterium is one of the most famous and cherished texts in choral sacred literature. In Latin, the text is O Magnum Mysterium et admirabile sacramentum ut animalia viderent dominum natum acentem in presepio, which translates to in English, O great mystery and wonderful sacrament that animals should see the newborn Lord lying in a manger. Enjoy the performance and have a great rest of your Sunday. Thank you, Billy. together. So our choir is invisible, although some members are here. Please rise if you are able. And we're going to sing the doxology, and this doxology will just serve as a reminder that this is the time during a service. Traditionally, we would pass the plate, but we have not done that for 18 months. There are plates by each door. There's a basket here. When you are coming or going, if you want to make a donation, please feel free to put it in an envelope or you can go on jxncc.org and give online. 
however you wish to help us, we are thankful for your faithfulness. Thanks for the gifts that have been given in our lives as we give thanks for those who share of their bounty today in the service of your love, O oh God. You can find in the Red Hymnal, Song 125, My Heart Sings Out. If you wish to remain standing, you may, or you can sit back down if you want. We're going to sing the him and then we're going to sing the benediction and then we'll go out into the beautiful day 124 124 okay correction for me think they know that song like nobody one maybe two okay by next week we're going to go to familiar carols so that you can feel like you can sing along a little better just before we go to the benediction the words to that song are taken from mary's magnificat those are the words that mary sings out when she meets elizabeth and i want to just say to you too because i didn't really talk about the scripture the two mentions in the Quran are mentions of Mary and the story of Christ's birth or his conception. Mary is the only woman mentioned in the Quran by name, and her name is mentioned more times in the Quran than it is mentioned in the Bible. So our stories talk to each other. The story of Isaiah speaks to Luke, and our faith speaks to our sister faiths and traditions. So just know. Your light, your stories, they go into the world and they change things. Let us sing the benediction together.
others, go in peace, go in hope. Thank you.